women's access to justice in a COVID world. Seven impact stories from across the Asia-Pacific region. Women's leadership in remote communities in Nepal has risen above and beyond during the pandemic, forming a small movement of 10 grassroots women's organizations They've mobilised COVID relief support and de-escalated domestic violence cases through home visits and counselling via phone calls. Beyond advocacy, this movement is connecting women facing intersecting forms of discrimination with community justice actors to access their rights. Amid COVID, most courts in Indonesia utilise video conferencing to conduct trials. The Pariaman Religious Court has innovated its services in divorce cases further. In the same day that a deed of divorce is produced, the divorcees receive updated identity cards reflecting the legal separation. This gives women better legal protection and easier access to services under their new civil status. Even during a global pandemic, the threat from natural disasters persists. Ms. Louisiana, a widow from Kadavu, Fiji, has lost her home in a tropical cyclone during the April 2020 COVID peak. The Pacific Human Rights Defenders Network addresses gender inequality and human rights, including gendered impacts of climate change. The network empowers women to protect and claim their rights. Ms. Louisiana is a member of the network to advocate for herself and other widows. COVID poses unique challenges for legal representation and access to services in prisons, leaving distinct needs of women in prison unmet. In Cebu, the Philippines, Street Law delivers a training program for women in prison and jail personnel to raise awareness among both groups on women's rights and international standards that apply to them. Knowing their rights will allow them to claim justice during COVID and beyond. Amid the COVID crisis, the Wahid Foundation in Indonesia has adapted their community-based approach. Working with women in the peace villages, the foundation has scaled up their operations of emergency assistance, mediation of conflicts and contact tracing via WhatsApp. Day-to-day -day support and capacity building are also coordinated using allocated WhatsApp chat groups. The women's groups saw a significant preventive impact on gender-based violence with women's empowerment being a pillar for the sustained success of the adjusted approach. Gender inequality is a persistent barrier to peace and development. In October 2020, Timor-Leste enacted a new mandate for frontline conflict revolution and prevention at the community level. The Gender Responsive Conflict Resolution Decree recognises the essential contributions of women Half of the 40 government-appointed mediators are women. In partnership with the Ministry of Interior, UN Women concluded a comprehensive capacity building program for gender-responsive mediation, despite COVID challenges. With limited access to courts amid COVID measures, community-based mechanisms are at the heart of justice for women. In the Philippines, the village's mandate and violence against women support desks in the community are the first line of protection for women. Cohesive coordination between family courts and barangays village leaders has realised more effective enforcement of protective orders in domestic violence cases during the pandemic. These impact stories are part of enhancing access to justice for women in Asia and the Pacific bridging the gap between formal and informal systems through women's empowerment and reduction of gender biases. An initiative under the Joint UN Women, ICJ and OHCHR programme and generously supported by the Swedish International Development Corporation Agency, CEDA.